Who are the angels? What do they look like? And what are they called to do? A high priest of the Christian Orthodox Church explains. High priest Kirill Ivanov. Angel in Greek means messenger. Angels proclaim to us the will of God. God sends them to us for our salvation. From the Holy Scriptures we know that there are nine heavenly angelic ranks, angels, archangels, mysteries, principalities, powers, princes, powers, thrones, cherubim, and seraphim. Now the seraphim I told you a, a couple of uh, videos a couple of weeks ago are the snake-looking snake flames, unquenchable flames of fire. Uh, this is the same type of seraphim that was in the Garden of Eden that uh, enticed Eve. She thought he was uh, one of the angels of God by his magnificent appearance, and she was enticed by his uh, looks and uh, didn't give the uh, proper attention to what he was telling her, which was against God's commandments. This also, of course, is confirmed in the New Testament by the Apostle St. Paul, who tells us that Satan appeared to Eve as an angel of light, seraphim that is, and uh, caused her to fall. Now, uh, the seraphim is, seraphim is a, as we know, a, um, uh, a Hebrew word, and according to world history, Nahushtan, the uh, seraphim Nahushtan are, of course, the uh, that's why Moses even had the uh, symbolism of the snake around his rod in the uh, peninsula of Sinai. When the tribes of Israel were being bitten by snakes and dying, he ran up a, a height and he, on his rod he put a bronze snake, a copper snake. And if you have copper or a metal, even a metallic object hitting, hitting by, uh, hit by the rays of the sun, uh, obviously you can't look at it, it's so blinding. And he put this on, he put the snake, the bronze, the copper snake on his rod and uh, told people to look at the, his rod in order to remind them of the angels of God, to think of God in other words. Now going back to this, from the Holy Scriptures we know that they, there are nine heavenly angelics uh, orders, one of them cherubim seraphim as we said, the whole heavenly hierarchy, the higher echelons transmit the knowledge of God to the lower echelons along the chain, down to us, the people, and we, knowing all this, grow in love. These archangels, whom we know by their names, actually belong to the highest angelic rank. The seraphim, because they are the closest to God, okay? The seraphim are the closest to God. Hence, that's why the uh, copper snake around uh, Moses' uh, rod to blind, to remind the people of God's throne and how God loves them. The seraphim, because they are the closest to God. Archangel Michael is the leader of the intangible heavenly forces. Archangel Gabriel is the herald of the mysteries of God. Archangel Raphael, we know him from the book of Tobit, of the Holy, of the, uh, uh, Holy Bible of the Old Testament. Raphael is the healer. Selafiel is a patron of, pa of prayer. Uriel is a patron of students. Yehudiel is a patron of work and of travel. And Barakiel is the protector of the family, the guardian of purity and chastity. Demons are fallen angels. God created them as angels, but they failed in their dignity and fell. That's the 10th rank that fell, the rank of angels. We know from the scriptures that Satan was created as a representative of the highest angelic rank, the cherubim, but he could not resist and rebelled against God. He was opposed by the archangel Michael, whose name means who is like God. He threw Satan out of heaven, and with Satan, the third of the angels turned away from God. People depicted angels in pictures and murals. Angels were also honored and served. This Old Testament tradition has migrated into orthodoxy, Christian orthodoxy. Angels are depicted as bright young men with two wings, but not only like that. The seraphim, for example, are depicted as having six wings, and the thrones are depicted as winged wheels endowed with eyes. In addition, some angels are depicted in a special way. 
Michael, for example, is depicted as a warrior with a sword. Here we have him here. He is sometimes depicted on horseback with a sword and trumpet. Gabriel is often depicted with a lily flower, blessing the Virgin Mary with a spermatic conception. Saint Lafiel, as the patron of prayer, is depicted with a censer. And Raphael, as a healer, is depicted with incense and an ark, healing, gifts, and medicines. People of the saints we also sometimes call angels, and we also picture them as angels. In a book of the prophet Malachi, we read the following words. Behold, I send my angel, and he will prepare a way before me, and suddenly the Lord whom I seek will come to his temple. This means that the angel will go before the Lord God. These words refer to John the Baptist. That is, John would go before the Lord. We know from the Bible that John the Baptist lived an angelic life in the desert. He is the first of the monastics, as we know, the monastic order. This is why he is depicted as a human prophet with wings. This picture is called the desert angel. Every person is given a guardian angel at baptism. The priest reads a special prayer for him during baptism. But not only every baptized person has a guardian angel, but also the whole nation. The prophet Zechariah tells us about this. The prophet saw how the angel with whom he communicated addressed the Lord in intercession for the people of Israel. And the Lord answered him with consoling words. That is, the angel was the guardian of the Jewish people. The day of the angel, which is celebrated by every Orthodox Christian, is actually the day of the heavenly patron. On this day, we commemorate the saint whose name we bear and who became famous on earth for his or her exploits. It has nothing to do with our guardian angel. This is a specific person. That is the feast day of the saint. Uh, the name we call the name day. Now, we call depraved spirits angels, but they are limited by form and space. Compared to us, of course, they are lifeless and incorporeal, and we cannot touch them. Does that, as St. John Damascene says, and St. John Ignatius Branchanina repeats him, compared to God, they are clothed in raw flesh. Only God is immaterial and corporeal. God is spirit. And as we noted above in the Old Testament, angels were honored and worshipped. Their images were placed in the temple, chanted in front of of their image and their images and worship. It was a respectable worship, but certainly not comparable to the worship of God. Angels are present in the temples and serve the priests during the divine liturgy. After all, every temple after its consecration has its own guardian angel. Every church has its own guardian angel. And uh, I'm going to tell you about what I saw in our little church in St. Sozon in Capota. Uh, there was such a uh, an old lady who lived in the time of Josephat of Belgorod. He, she lived to an advanced age, old, weak, sick, but still could not die. When Joseph saw him, saw her, and thanks to the divine insight, realizing that she had some serious and unrepentant sin, and when he began to confess to his bishop, he revealed himself to him. He was in his youth when he once performed the divine liturgy a landowner, benefactor, and patron of the temple of the church, entered the church and demanded that he perform divine liturgy again. We could know he, the priest can only do that once a day, by the way. Since a priest can only celebrate one mass a day, the priest refused. But the baron insisted, and the priest began to prepare for the divine liturgy. And then an angel appeared to him and told him not to dare to do that, or he would be cursed. And the priest answered him, you yourself would be cursed and he performed the divine liturgy for the second time. The Lord protected this priest and did not let him die without repenting of his grave sin, and as soon as he confessed, he quietly went to the Lord. During the divine liturgy, we sing cherubim chant, in which the, whole, the people praying in the temple and the church are compared to the cherubim, and they are called to leave all their worldly cares and concerns so that they may not stand before God obstructed. Angel, uh, Archangel Michael is a leader of the heavenly corporeal forces. Now, in our little church of St. Sosan Capota, about two years ago, we, were, we, had, we had the pandemic, and the children had to go to school. It was the uh, feast of the uh, finding of the Holy Cross, September 14. 
it was a Monday and the children had uh, the beginning of school that time. One of the young uh, lads that helped us in the church, he was at that time, what, uh, 13 years old, 12 years old. Um, he said he, did, he wanted to be at the church for the Holy Liturgy, but he had to go to school because they were going to tell him about the measures that they had to take with the masks and the distancing and all this. And um, he wanted to be at the Holy Liturgy, but he, was, he, he went to school. So uh, we had the Holy Liturgy, and there were very few people, but uh, at one point I saw somebody at the uh, door of St. Michael's door of the Holy of Holies uh, looking out towards the parishioners. And it was this boy. And uh, I said, oh, he probably didn't go to school. He decided to stay with us. So at the end of the Holy Liturgy, I see his grandmother who helps out of the church. And I said, oh, I didn't know your grandson would be with us today. And, he, and she said, he's not. He went to school. I said, what are you talking about? He was standing at the door of St. Michael at the Holy of Holies looking out at us. She says, no, he went to school. Then I went to our coffee room, the Yerondoriki, and I opened up the Holy Bible, and the passage fell on the passage of the New Testament where the angel of God went to Peter when Peter was, uh, this was in the um, um, uh, Acts of the Apostles, when Peter was jailed, an angel of God went to him and took him out of jail, opened the door of the jail and took him out of jail, and he went, Peter went back to where the uh, disciples and um, followers of Christ were hiding. And he knocked on the door, and one of the women who heard his voice said, Oh, it must be Peter's angel, because Peter's still in jail. And then Peter said, No, it's me. It's not my angel, it's me. So obviously these people at that time knew what angels would do. Angels would appear to people looking like the people that they protected, and even sounding like them. So uh, that gave me the answer that it, this angel that looked like the young boy, that you know, 12 year old, 13 year old boy that wanted to be with us uh, was actually an angel that looked like that boy. And I told this to the priest and the priest said, oh, it must be the angel of our church. And the psalter, the cantor said, it, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a blessing that an angel appeared with the appearance of the young boy who wanted to be with us but was not. That was a miracle. And miracles do happen in our church, you know? A lot of people say, oh, why do I have to go to church every time? This is the same old rigmarole and, you know, uh, a hodgepodge, and I don't want to go, I'm just wasting my time. No. You go to your Christian Orthodox church, you will be given a lot of beautiful personal gifts by uh, our divine triune God. Christ is risen, truly risen. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. Please support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.